When it comes to archaeology, Dr. Zahi Hawass is Egypt's own Indiana Jones. I'm a lucky person, and I, I always uh, depend on my luck. As the head of Egypt's Supreme Council for Antiquities, Hawass has presided over several new finds and launches, including the soon-to-be-open Bent Pyramid at Dashur. We talked to Hawass about his life, his discoveries, and his controversial plans to copyright the pyramids of Giza. When most people come to Egypt, the biggest attraction they come for are the pyramids of Giza. But oftentimes people leave somewhat frustrated by the touts and the overcrowding there. What sort of efforts are you going to make at, at Dashur to sort of to, to prevent that there? No, but at least leave Dashur. No talk about Giza. I'm telling you now and everyone, September 1st, 2009, big change is going to happen at Giza. All the camel and horses will be in the desert. No one will be able to get in the site. If you want to ride a camel, the pyramids will be a background. Also, all the people who sell souvenirs will be in the desert. No cars will be permitted to go up. You'll take electrical cars for the first time and go inside. And I'm telling you, September 1st is the time that when you enter inside the pyramid, you will feel the magic of the pyramids. It was like my dream because I grew up working at Giza and I, uh, I wrote my doctorate dissertation about pyramids. And pyramids are like my life then for me to save the pyramid would be fantastic. I'm going to do the same with many sites, like Abrawash will open it to the public, uh, Abu Sir, and Dashur. You've discussed copywriting the pyramids. You've put in requests all over, all over the world to bring back antiquity. What are your motivations behind this? You know, I have to tell you, uh, sometimes when I make an announcement of something, people think this is a dream, cannot happen. But I always make my dreams true. If the antiquity so will be signed, if anyone is still antiquities, 25 years in jail. If anyone even write a name, his name on monuments, five years in jail. Replicas. If you make exact size, only Egypt. Only the Supreme Council antiquities. If you make it bigger, you have to take a permission from us then China and others will not be able to make replica. And we can make big projects, factories, to make replica with the signatures of the Cairo Museum to sell it all over Egypt. And I'm telling that this could make money to Egypt, maybe similar to the Suez Canal. And I have to tell you, I'm very happy that I made awareness everywhere, that people recognized our effort. I took it really personally. When I was young, and I go to any museum and I see any stolen artifacts, I tell them I will never come to your museum unless you return it back. Then before I became the head of antiquities, I did return from Museum of Fine Arts in Boston about four pieces of antiquity stolen. From the Young Museum, one big limestone, Stila. Then when I became the head of antiquities, it was like my goal. Now, People send me artifacts. They say, we support you. Now I'm after the Nefertiti bust. Rosetta Stone, the Zodiac at the Louvre, uh, the bust of, of, uh, of the architect of the Great Pyramid at Hildesheim Museum, and the bust of the, of the architect of the Second Pyramid. I'm telling you, I wanted these pieces first to come to be exhibited in the Grand Museum. And I see that museums, some of them, do not want to cooperate with us. But I believe in one by one. If you treat me well, I will treat you well. Egypt will never open its scientific places at all to any museum who are not cooperating with us. What do you consider your biggest discovery to date? I think my biggest discovery is the Valley of the Golden Mummies at Bahrain Oasis and the tombs of the pyramid builders at Giza. One of the two important discoveries that I made in my life. And this year, you're going to hear lots of important discoveries that's going to happen uh, in, inside the Great Pyramid, the family of King Tut, and in the Valley of the Kings. You've spent your life uh, documenting the lives of others and, and making discoveries and, and, and writing history, essentially. What, how do you want history to look back on, on Dr. Zahi? How do you want the history of I, I think history will look at one important thing, that during my career, I dedicated my life to one thing, archaeology. I'm not like others who entered fighting anyone or 
I defend only myself. And the most important thing that every minute in my life was given to archaeology. And I hope people in the future will remember this.